for November 21. Um, please silence your cell phone. And if you've not been here before, the uh, staff will give us the information about every item. We will ask technical questions, and then after that, we open it up for the audience to speak. And after the audience has finished speaking, we bring it back to the plan commission and uh, take our votes. So call the roll. David Borsak, Ed Bowen, Jeffrey Tomes. Here. Thomas Foytek, John Hintz. Here. Steve Cummings. Here. Kathleen Propp. Here. John Kiefer. Here. Robert Weiger. Here. Michael Ford. You have the minutes of the special November 6 meeting and the November 7 meeting. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And it's carried. First item, accept and release easements at the eastern terminus of East 14th Avenue. Thank you. Yeah, this um, request has two items. The city is requesting the acceptance of a storm sewer easement on the south side of East 14th Avenue and the release of easement rights on a portion of vacated East 14th Avenue. Uh, the property where the storm sewer easement acceptance is being requested is located on an undeveloped portion of the uh, Pioneer uh, marina property adjacent to Lake Winnebago and the release of the easement rights is located in the majority of vacated East 14th Avenue over here uh, with, the ex or with the exception of a small triangular piece on the west side of the vacation. Um, East 14th Avenue was vacated in 1965 uh, I'm, yeah 1965 and typically when a street is vacated the vacating entity maintains easement rights over the vacation. Um, these two requests are part of a storm sewer improve, improvement project uh, currently underway along East 14th Avenue. Uh, the first item is the uh, storm sewer easement acceptance. Uh, the purpose of this request is con to consolidate two existing storm sewer outfalls on East 14th Avenue and East South Park Avenue and they're going to be combined into one larger outfall um, along East 14th Avenue. Uh, the current, there is a current uh, outfall which, uh, which uh, dis discharges into Lake Winnebago, but there is currently no easement in place for this outfall. Uh, the, the Department of Public Works has been in contact with the property owner and they're agree agreeable to granting the easement. And this easement will also, will also allow for the release of easement rights al located along East 14th Avenue. Uh, the proposed easement, which I have up on a screen, is kind of irregular in shape, more or less uh, hammerhead shaped, uh, extending, extending to the southeast from East 14th Avenue and in, into the lake. Um, easement documents have been drafted, drafted by the city attorney's office and await signatures pending common council approval. And then the uh, second item is the release of easement rights. The city is requesting the release of easement rights within most of vacated East 14th Avenue. Uh, the city currently does not have any infra infrastructure in place and does not have any plans to construct anything within the vacated area. And um, just a small triangular portion is being excluded from this request uh, that is adjacent to the easement uh, acceptance. Once the easement rights are released, the owner will, of the property will be, to be able to fully utilize the vacated area for development. So with that, it's just a map showing uh, the specifics of the uh, storm sewer easement. And staff is recommending approval of the acceptance of uh, the proposed uh, storm sewer easement and the partial release of easement rights over vacated East 14th Avenue as requested. Okay, technical questions? Jeff. Just for full disclosure, is the DNR okay with the larger Outflow. Mr. Gordy is coming up to the podium. Yes, we've obtained a permit for it already. Okay. Thanks. Any other technical questions? Anyone from the audience wanting to speak on this issue? Storm sewer easements. Seeing no one, back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Cummings. Aye. Kiefer. Aye. 
Weigert? Aye. Tomes? Aye. Ince? Aye. And Prop? Aye. Motion carried 6 0. Item two, residential design standards variance request for one window on the west side of 614 West 11th Avenue. Thank you. So this one, the applicant is requesting approval of a variance from the city's residential design standards to permit the reorientation of one window from vertical to horizontal on the west side elevation of a single family home located at 614 West 11th Avenue. The applicable ordinance provision the variance, for the variance um, that applies here is section 30-241B1. Existing window openings on the front facade including gables or the first 20 feet of the side facade extending from the front facade plane shall be maintained and not be closed or filled totally or, par or partially. Subject property is a residential lot located at 614 West 11th Avenue and is approximately 7,500 square feet in area. Outlined in blue here, um, the property contains a 1,520 square foot two-story single-family residential structure built prior to 1920 according to the assessor website. The surrounding area contains predominantly single-family uses as is shown here with a few two-family uses as well as South Park to the south. The subject property in areas to the north, west, and south are zoned SR9 single family residential district, while the area to the east is zoned UMU urban mixed use. The comprehensive plan land use recommendation is residential for the 10 year and 20 year recommendation. For the analysis section of this, um, at the July 18th, 2017 plan commission meeting, the commission discussed and approved a variance for the reorientation of the adjacent window on the same facade plane. Um, this is just kind of a schematic here showing that facade and showing what the applicant would like to um, e eventually end up with on that facade. The first window was reoriented from a vertical to a horizontal orientation. The property owner would like to modify the remaining window on the facade plane so that the two windows are consistent in style and appearance. The applicant is requesting a design standards variance to allow for the modification of a window from a five foot by two and a half foot vertical oriented window to a six foot by two foot horizontal oriented window. The window is located in the home's bedroom situated on the west facade, this facade here. The new window is size 4.6% smaller than the original which falls within the size variation allowance for a window replacement. This window or this variance request is for the reorientation of the window as this may affect the architectural character of the house. The applicants did state that they would replace the siding around these windows. Um, th that was a condition for the first window and that would be a condition for the second window that they would replace the siding and make sure it's all consistent with uh, or all consistent in similar appearance. Um, these photos here just kind of show there's um, an evening view of the window there, I believe. Um, or a typical evening, actually, I should say, excuse me. Um, they do talk about how people can view right into the house and that um, the bedroom containing the window is 10 feet away from the primary walkway for the neighboring rental property. According to the owner, the neighboring property contains 14 windows, of which many are directly in line with the window they'd like to reorient. Much foot traffic occurs immediately, immediately outside this window. Therefore, the owners would like to reorient the window to increase their privacy. Staff evaluated the closing of the window. Just trying to see here if there's a photo there. That's the window, actually. You can see the one that was reoriented there. The siding has yet to be um, replaced there. They'd like to do the same thing with this one here. And then there's a walkway that a lot of um, neighboring rental um, tenants use and walk by there at all hours of the day. Um, Anyway, back to um, the staff finding. Um, staff evaluated the closing of the window and looked at the impact that this would have on um, the design standards as it relate to preserving the home's architectural integrity and the potential impact on adjacent properties, the neighborhood character and the curb appeal of the block. Staff is of the opinion that the modification of the window will not negatively impact the architectural style of the house, especially if they replace the bedroom <coughs> window with the same style and size window as the other window on the same facade plane there. 
The subject window is closer to the street and the appearance of the facade would benefit from the windows having the same orientation. Staff recognizes the uniqueness or hardship to the house with the location of the neighboring rental property and the um, windows that exist in the house currently. Um, it is up to the plan commission to evaluate the pr provided information and to de determine, excuse me, their best judgment and opinion if requiring the original vertical oriented window creates an unnecessary hardship. Financial hardships, unreasonable difficulty in remodeling, loss of room function are possible criteria that the plan commission could consider in their determination of an unnecessary hardship. Staff recommends approval of the variance request to permit the orientation of the window from horizontal to vertical at 614 West 11th Avenue with the following finding and conditions. The standards do not apply to this particular project because the reoriented window will not adversely affect the st structure's architectural design, the neighborhood character, or curve appearance of the block. The conditions for this would be the window would be the same size, width, and height of the previously reoriented window on the same facade, and it would be located in line vertically with the existing reoriented horizontal window. The window trim would be consistent in appearance with that of the existing reoriented horizontal window and all siding on the facade would be replaced with siding consistent in appearance with the siding on the rest of the house within one year of issuance of the first window permit. Okay, technical questions. When was the first issue uh, permit issued? I believe I looked and evolved today and the first permit was issued on October 16th or around that date. When they put the first window in? Um, that window actually was put in before it came to plan commission. And I believe that's why they applied for a variance initially. I guess I'm curious is when the window was put in. How, how long ago, the first one? Um, that I am not sure, actually. I think the first violation occurred in April, as I recall, when the property owner was uh, sent the correction notice for work without a permit. Uh, there's just some other pictures here you wanted to. To, uh, show to the Planning Commission just the conditions of the neighboring properties. Uh, I guess there's some close ups of, um, of the property owner's house showing the first replacement and then the second window uh, closer to the front, which she wants to re replace. And this is a view from the inside of the house looking out, <coughs> showing uh, the lack of wall space for the bed and just the, uh, the lack of privacy with the neighboring property. Jeff? I guess I'm a little bit confused. So the, the, the first window was done, there was our ordinance in place at the, uh, at the time Correct. that first window was done? Correct. So the first window was done, didn't come here. It did come here. It did come here. After the fact. After mm -hmm. the fact, okay. So we approved that. And that was back in April. So my question is, and, and, and this came up in our last meeting, why are we giving them a year to put the siding on? I think last time, the last one we, we did, we gave them three months from the time they got to permit because we're working on what now, eight, nine months on that first window and the siding still in there. I think it just came to us in, in October after the fact so now what I'm saying is is that that first window was put in in April is that correct mm -hmm. that's what yes. it was and the siding still isn't done so mm -hmm. I think three months is plenty of time if they if they're replacing the window that they replace that siding I, I think a year is just too long especially from this th this particular one you can see that very visibly from the sidewalk right mm -hmm. I would, I, the year is just our standard permit no, I understand, and I think we probably ought to think through that, especially on ones where it's it's visible from, you know, pedestrian and from other other houses. I don't really have a problem with the orientation, uh, especially since it's in a bedroom, um, to have some some kind of privacy for that. Um, but I would I would uh, want you the the commission to think about maybe moving that year down to something less. Uh, I, I think a year is way too much time to have to get the siding put on. 
I mean, I think the the last one that we pushed out at three months. I think yeah, we talked the app, I think we talked the applicant. The applicant. Yeah, that's said. right. He said he was fine with that. Yeah. So I I'm not sure if the applicant is here on this one. Is the applicant? Yeah. So we, um, we, but just a minute, we, we're going to have more technical questions, then we'll ask you up. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> then we can ask that question. So okay. Timing. Any other technical questions? Okay, now open to the public. Please come up to the podium. Give your name and address and sure. your comments. Good afternoon, Ray Reinders, 614 West 11th Avenue, Oshkosh. So I did come before the board, yeah, <clears throat> and we did put the... Uh, the window in without a, uh, a standard permit um, at that point in time uh, what happened is the fact that we waited for the um, documentation to come back from the Planning Commission in which we were discussing whether or not we were going to take it back over to zoning for the second window at that point in time uh, we finally got I do believe the final assessment of what the Planning Commission did in terms of the approval from there uh, we were actively discussing whether or not to submit the second request for that bedroom window in which uh, the city then was on us to pay up for the first one in which we uh, acknowledged at that point in time and took care of and in addition to that at that time uh, knowing that we put this in front of the commission um, we went ahead and uh, uh, checked out for our second um, permit for that window that is in question so we're proactively going after it as far as the year uh, I again that was the recommendation from the board uh, the Planning Commission for us to reside uh, actively on the other side of this uh, house we do have a, a live permit so on the other side on the east side of this this home uh, we have about half of that uh, siding already tie back and ready to go so we're actively working on it uh, winter is approaching we're trying to do as much as we can uh, but in good faith, we brought in front of you uh, what we had in terms of our, our needs, and we were just simply acting upon your needs. And your needs at that point in time were one year. So I was trying to uh, uh, basically comply with what you've recommended to me. But if there is some degree of that you uh, have in terms of urgency, I will move that up. Uh, do I want this to go out until next May, June, July? No, I want this to be as complete as... Uh, uh, and it, as quickly as I can get done. So is it reasonable? Uh, I think Jeff suggested three months. Is that reasonable for you, or is uh, that we're, not reasonable depending uh, on the weather? Or from the time you got the window permit, from not, the, not from now, from the time. And, you and get the we, yeah, the window permit is only um, the window permit was only about a month and a half ago. So to say that we'd be still looking at uh, the fall. Uh, if I could just take a step back and, and try to explain, as you see here in this, uh, the photo on both photos, uh, it took me nearly nine months to get that electrical service based on the um, um, current workload to the electricians in the city of Oshkosh, actively pursuing 11 different electronic or electrical contractors and only got two responses to give you an idea of whether or not I could right now go out and affordably try to find somebody to do siding on a home like this during winter, I don't know. Could I put a temporary solution across that Tyvek paper on underneath that uh, horizontally adjusted window? I could if that appeases the people next door um, or from foot traffic or car traffic coming by. It is 20 feet deep on the house, um, no complaints. Actually, I've gotten quite a few compliments from the neighbors actively taking an interest in this home. So it's 130 years old. Um, it never looked like this before. Take some views from the Google Maps and you'll see. Concrete drive, first time in 100 plus years. Trees trimmed. Clean siding. Front facade looking very presentable. So we're actively trying to convert this home into a very well suited home i think what you just said is give you enough time until spring in case you can't get a contractor in winter sets in it's it's okay. very difficult it's it's very difficult I, I i know personally uh, being a business owner here in town um and just having those frank conversations with the electricians who i did communicate with they are they cannot secure resources in the city of Oshkosh for whatever reason. I imagine across the trades, it is difficult. 
I passed out my business card to two people that were actually wrapping windows down on Ninth Avenue, never received a phone call from either of them. So to let you know that I've actively gone out there to recognize different trades doing this type of work. So um, I don't think it's too demanding. It's, it's going to be a challenge, but um, we're committed, um, uh, not only for the previous commitment that you set for me, the year timeline, uh, but definitely it's, it's on my radar screen. It's my, my wife's honey to-do list. So I'm, I'm, after, you know, I'm, I'm engaged, let's call it that. I'm not sitting on my hands. Um, that window right there, um, just based on, just based on the, uh, the timeline of getting the permit, having the second variance request. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Anybody else wanting to speak on this issue? Okay, back to the commission. Discussion, what's your pleasure? John? Um, I just want to confirm some of the, the things the applicant was saying because my cousin actually runs an elect electrical company here in town and I know he can't find enough help and he can't get to all his jobs. So I know how it is with the contractors and he says it's like that with everybody right now. So I can understand where he's coming from and I don't know why we need to keep rushing everything that comes through here, especially in the winter. Make a motion we approve this as written. Second. Any more discussion? All the roll. Cummings. Aye. <clears throat> Kiefer. Aye. Weigert. Aye. Ford. Aye. Bowen. Aye. Tomes. No. <clears throat> Hence. Aye. Prop. Aye. Motion carried 7-1. Okay, next item, architectural building plan review for a sanitary lift station on North Eagle Street at Mary Jewel Park. We've seen this before. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so this, this one was laid over from the October 17th meeting, um, and changes to the design have since been proposed and discussed at a workshop. Um, the site is located at the northwest corner of Oshkosh Ave and North Eagle Street. Um, here's the proposed uh, site layout. And here um, was the original uh, proposal for the design, and here's the view from the southeast. And here is the, um, the proposed uh, elevation from the southeast. Um, it's the same as was discussed at the workshop. Um, however, they would like to keep the louvers um, located up, up here. Um, here is the original uh, east elevation, and here is the east elevation after the uh, proposed changes. Um, again, they'd like to keep the louvers. Um, here is the original design of the north elevation, um, which had the um, HVAC box on the, located on the facade here. And here is the uh, proposed north elevation, um, and it's the same as was discussed. The workshop accepts um, at the workshop um, they propose to have the HVAC unit on the interior. Um, however, <laughs> after further uh, engineering design or engineering, they realize that that is not feasible, so they would like to have it located on the north facade. Here is the original uh, west elevation design. And here is the new proposal for the west elevation. And also this one has discussed at the workshop, they had the um, louvers removed. However, um, looking further into the costs, um, they're proposing to keep the louvers as for the um, redesign costs and the equipment costs would be um, a large change in price there, so they want to keep those. And staff recommends approval of the architectural design of the proposed sanitary lift station with the proposed changes. Okay, technical questions. None. Wow. Um, oh, Jeff. I mean, John. Um, <clears throat> I didn't see it up there. The south elevation, it looked like in here they've taken away green, the foliage around the south elevation, if I'm understanding this. No. I'm just looking at the original design in our packet has the, has the foliage, and then the next one has nothing. 
So I was. Let's circle back to that when we get public works or a come up here. Okay. okay. Any other technical questions right now? Anybody? For Paul, but that's it. Anybody from the audience that wishes to speak on this? Okay. Paul Tim with ACOM. Uh, we have not removed any vegetation. If something changed on that landscaping plan, is not changed. Okay. Thank you. Um, Paul, the, the louvers that we're talking about leaving on there is. So those little squares that you see yep. in and, the sign. And is the, the material around those, what is that again? That's that a material? cement board. Okay. And, and the louvers, I'm assuming, could be color matched. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. so. We can make them outstanding. We can make them color matching. I, I guess I just wanted to confirm I knew what materials <clears throat> we were looking at. So, I mean, it seemed like it's that big a deal. Any other questions? You've done a nice job. Thank you. I hope the council will appreciate it. I won't, hope it won't be too expensive. <laughs> it's I guess worth, not. It's worth the investment. It is. Uh, the mayor says it's worth the investment. <laughs> hey. Worth the investment. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well, I do have one question. How how visible will this be from Oshkosh Avenue? Just in the right field side of the outfield from the ball diamond there. So <coughs> not that you'd visible. have to be looking at it. I think yeah. Yeah. it would be in the distance. The ball diamond's in the foreground. Yeah. Right. So I mean, you're right. 500 feet from Oshkosh. We have an aerial. Yeah. We have an aerial up. <coughs> yeah. Kind of what oh, the subject site is. So yeah, north of the oh, okay. field. You'd have to be looking for it. <laughs> and does, you should be watching the highway now looking for yeah. it. Yeah. And I think it, the color scheme is, gonna, is natural, just kind of going to blend in. Um, Anybody else that want, uh, Jeff, I, I, I'm not sure we close public comment. Anybody else that needs to speak or wants to speak from the audience? Okay, back to the planning commission, <laughs> I, Jeff. Just, what was the color scheme? Because, I mean, on the renderings, it looks gray. So is it supposed to be more earth tones? It, Paul, come on back. Guy from ACOM. <laughs> they brought, I think they brought the um, yeah, did, I think you had stuff the last color time. board last time. Right? Color yeah, well, you said it may, it may the, change uh, a little rock bit. Rock veneer will be a natural <laughs> rock from uh, right. Fond du Lac quarry area, and then we'll color match from there. We planned on more of aluminum style roofing color, and then the actual color, like I talked in the workshop, the color matching will happen during the product's submittal process. I'm just thinking more something that'll blend, you know, blend into earth tones and stuff like that rather than, than grays. We certainly can do that. I, <clears throat> Any other? You, I think if you look at the natural stone, that's less earth. I mean, you think earth tone, or you're thinking the reds, or you're thinking. Yeah, usually it's like you know the tans and browns and okay. greens, and, you know, are, are mostly earth tones. Just so it kind of blends in, you know, with trees and stuff that are brown and things of that nature. You got the brown wood on it. I mean, you know, the natural wood in it, it seems like having gray would be. Yeah, I'd, you'd almost. It, it'd be I don't believe the plan is gray for this okay. side here. It's just how these. Um, renderings pop on the color. Yeah, I mean, but that's what the public's <laughs> going to see, and they're going to say, "Oh, it's a big, great building." I got that comment last night. All right, <laughs> walking out in the parking lot. Last night. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, more discussion. Ready for a motion? I make a motion we accept. Second. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? Call the roll. Cummings? Aye. Kiefer? Aye. Weigert? Aye. Ford? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Tomes? Aye. Hintz? Aye. And Prof? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. Well, that brings us to the end of the formal meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we don't leave. We now have a workshop on the Oshkosh Avenue land use, zoning, and design standards. All right, give us a couple minutes to up here. Absolutely not. We're on, you're, on the, you're on the clock. Yeah. <laughs>